A woman who accused a visiting Catholic priest of sexually assaulting her when she was a teenager was hoping someday to face him in court, even though he had moved back to his native home of India. Just last week, the Michigan Attorney General's office said it was still working to extradite Father Jacob Villain to face rape charges. What the AG's office didn't know until learning it from the victim was that the priest had died almost a year ago, some 8,000 miles away. Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker has the story. The woman accused the priest of sexually assaulting her repeatedly in the 1970s in a church office here in Benton Harbor. That led to criminal charges just four years ago against the priest. They're honoring him. They're kissing his casket. They're laying flowers at his feet. They're um, wearing badges with his picture. Ann Phillips Browning was searching her accused rapist's name on YouTube last weekend when she found video of his funeral in India. I wonder, how many of these people know? How many of these people know what he was really like? I gotta what? believe there's some. She'd had no idea that he had died in December 2022 at the age of 88, and neither did the Michigan Attorney General's office that was working to extradite him. I was stunned. Like, I can't believe no one else knew this. Valian was a revered religious scholar and author in his native India, known for his singing voice and his knowledge of the Syriac language, which predates Christ. He was a visiting priest in the Kalamazoo Diocese in the 1970s when his accuser says he molested her at least a dozen times in the rectory at St. John the Evangelist in Benton Harbor. He was in his 30s at the time. It started when she was 15, according to court documents. When it was happening, I'd go to Mass on Sundays, and I'd see his hands holding the host, which was Jesus. And that always left an impression with me, like, how can he do that, knowing where those hands have been? The state AG's office charged Valiant in 2019 with two counts of first-degree sexual assault, rape, and vowed to extradite him from India, though it acknowledged it could take years. He was already in his 80s. He is proof positive that you cannot live long enough, nor can you run far enough away to escape our investigation. It felt so good to be seen, to be heard, and to be validated. Did you, have you assaulted any children as a priest? Valian denied the allegations in a phone conversation with Target 8. No. So I knew there was a decent chance that he would die before he got back here. While she praises the church for taking steps to prevent future sexual abuse, she questions how it handles accused priests and their victims. She believes the church helped keep him from facing the charges, allowing him to retire to India. I was hoping he would be defrocked so he could no longer appear as a priest. He could no longer wear clerical garb. You know, that, that didn't be, happen. No. No, actually nothing happens. She says she sent a link to the funeral video to the AG's office, along with this email. It is not only disappointing, it feels very dismissive to not be able to see any justice done, not from your office or not from my church. The AG's office responded with an apology. I cannot imagine what this must have been like for you to find out this way. I so wish we could have been the ones to tell you been nice. We just had no idea. Now she says her only chance for justice is in the afterlife. If he's not repented, I believe he's going to hell. Um, what he did was pure evil. It destroyed me. It destroyed my face. It destroyed my emotional well-being. Um, it's a very serious, serious thing that he did. And he's going to answer for that at some point. And that's what I have to hang on to. She says she's still waiting for the diocese in Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo to release the lists of credibly accused priests. In Ben Harbor, I'm targeting investigator Ken Colker.